This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Iran reveals its new secret nuclear plant. The IAEA demands immediate access. Will Iran stop its uranium enrichment program? And will Israel attack Iran? Answers to these questions and more on Link TV's Mosaic Intelligence Report. Iran has agreed to allow international nuclear inspectors to view its recently revealed uranium enrichment plant near the city of Qom. And President Obama has called talks between U.S. diplomats and their Iranian counterparts about the country's nuclear program. It's a constructive beginning, but it must be followed with constructive action by the Iranian government. However, recent events and heated rhetoric concerning Iran's nuclear program are reminiscent of the final days that led to the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003 when then U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell presented the United Nations Security Council on February 5th of that year with what he called solid evidence that showed Iraq had still not complied with resolutions calling for it to disarm and was maintaining a secret WMD program. Every statement I make today is backed up by sources, solid sources. These are not assertions. What we're giving you are facts and conclusions based on solid intelligence. It seems that history is repeating itself. Unlike what happened to Iraq in 2003, an invasion of Iran is not on the horizon. However, the prospect of targeting its nuclear facilities is more real than ever, more so than during the Bush administration. The reason is simple. No amount of pressure or sanctions will force Iran to abandon what it perceives as its unalienable right to pursue its nuclear ambitions. In an article in June, I outlined the drive behind Iran's nuclear ambition, and this has not changed. But most importantly, the Obama administration, although pursuing diplomatic means, seems to be convinced that the Iranians are conducting a clandestine nuclear program parallel to the public one. The aim of this, though of course not admitted by the Iranians, is clearly the acquisition of nuclear weapons. This position is shared by Israel, which will most likely get the green light to attack Iran's nuclear facilities by the spring of 2010, when all negotiations with Iran will have hit a dead end. Since April of this year, the Israeli military has been preparing itself to launch a massive aerial assault on Iran's nuclear facilities. The United States and Israel have recently conducted their most complex military exercise ever, jointly testing three ballistic missile defense systems. Among the steps taken to ready Israeli forces for what would be a risky raid requiring pinpoint aerial strikes are the acquisition of three airborne warning and control aircraft and regional missions to simulate the attack. Of course, if this were to happen, which we do not expect, then this will mark the end of Israel. Our response will make them regret their decision. The Israeli Air Force has recently been conducting training exercises involving F-15 and F-16 jets, helicopters and refueling tankers flying to distances of more than 870 miles, the distance between Israel and Iran. Among the recent preparations by the Air Force was the Israeli attack of a weapons convoy in Sudan allegedly bound for militants in the Gaza Strip. A recent article in the British Daily Express reported that Israeli fighter jets have been allowed to use Saudi airspace to launch Goit alone airstrikes on Iranian nuclear installations. The issue has been discussed in a closed-door meeting in London, where British intelligence chief Sir John Scarlett, his Israeli counterpart uh, Meir Dagan, and a Saudi official were present. According to the report, Scarlett has been told that Saudi airspace would be at Israel's disposal should Tel Aviv decide to move forward with his military plans against Iran. The Saudis have denied such claims. However, for the first few weeks, Saudi-sponsored media has been raising concern over the prospect of a nuclear-armed Iran. No mention of Israel's 200-plus nuclear weapons. A survey just released by the American Jewish Committee reports that for the first time ever, 
a majority of American Jews support using military force to prevent Iran from developing nuclear weapons. 56% of American Jews think that the United States should strike Iran, while 66% of Israeli Jews back such an attack. How many Americans support an attack on Iran? Well, 57% of American voters say Israel would be justified in attacking Iran's nuclear facilities, given that Iran has publicly threatened to annihilate Israel, according to a McLaughlin poll conducted on May 8 and 9. I'm not being an alarmist, but the writing is on the wall. I'm Jamal Dejani for the Mosaic Intelligence Report. To learn more about this program or to share your thoughts, visit us at linktv.org slash mir. You can also follow my updates on Twitter. This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs, programs which connect you to the world.